your what you graphed. Especially when you have two functions on the same piece of graph paper. This was patient A, so label it A of T. And this is patient B, so label it B of T. And then to the nearest hour, when does the amount of the given drug remaining in patient B begin to exceed the amount? So B starts lower, but ends higher. And actually, it, it just so happened to happen right around 6 when uh, one was 99 point eight and the other one was a hundred point something. So this is to the nearest hour six. You could just do second trace intersection on your calculator and figure that out that way as well. And then the last part of this, this was on a test. The doctor will allow patient A to take another. So we're just dealing with patient A. So I'm going to recopy down that formula which is 800 e to the negative point three four seven t. Patient A is allowed to take another 800 milligrams once only 15% of the original dose is left in the body. Aiden, what was the original dose for patient A? It's in my formula. Is it 347? Nope, that's the rate of decay. If you didn't know, it's back up in the paragraph at the top. Patient A. John? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, when I ask a question, the invitation stands that it's for all of you to try to think about the answer so that when someone gets it, you can confirm or deny that you were correct. That's a good self-checking mechanism. Or if they don't know it, you're ready and prepared to give your answer. So we all don't have to suffer through the pain of repetition. Okay? <coughs> it's painful for you. It's painful for me. The question was, what was the original dose of patient A? Yes, 800. So once only 15% of that is remaining. So our final amount, we have to wait until that's 15% of 800. That's a little side calculation, little algebra one. 15% of 800 means we're waiting till there's 120 milligrams left. So we're just going to solve this formula and find out to the nearest tenth of an hour. So we divide by 800 first. We get 0.15 equals e to the negative 0.347t, natural log both sides, and you get negative 1.897 equals negative 0.347t, and again, I rounded that negative 1.897 to write it down, but I'm going to keep that on my calculator and divide both sides by negative 0.347. And I get 5.4672, yada, yada. They say round to the nearest tenth. So 5.5 hours. Any questions on that? Okay. We're going to jump to August 2016 and start working our way through these multiple choices. Okay. Um, 21 gives us a graph and asks us what is the remainder when we divide by x plus 4. Isn't this very similar to a question from those practice tests? Very, very similar. If you're dividing by x plus 4, the remainder is going to be the same as p of what? Negative 4. Very good, Bo. So if we go to negative 4, the y-coordinate is 0. So the remainder will be 0. X plus 4 is a factor. All of these things, you know, make sense now. X plus 4 is a factor. That's why negative 4 is a root. The remainder is 0, yada, yada. It's all connected. So I always thought that was interesting because the people who make this test didn't make those other packets that we were working from, yet there's definitely some commonalities. So someone had some insider info, and uh, we had seen a question like that before. 
Um, all right, take a minute. Read this. Think about what your answer is going to be, and we'll take a vote to see where we stand. Hold up one, two, three, or four on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, I see twos and fours. Let me tell you one thing and see if people are going to change their answer. The denominator is the kind of frequency with which that rate change happens. The denominator is the frequency with, with, with which that rate change is going to occur. Let's vote again. One, two, three. Oh, good. Most of us changed it to four, which it is. There is a 30% change. So the confusion clearly was whether the 14 goes on top or the bottom. So every 14 days, the frequency of that rate change is every 14 days. So that's your denominator. We're increasing by 30% every 14 days. The amount of time we wait, so which expression can be used to calculate the amount she would owe in dollars after one year? That's just time passing. So we're waiting 365 days. Obviously notice they changed that. Uh, I, I kind of think they probably should have had some multiple choice with one in there for one year. And, and make sure people know to get them in the same unit. But they obviously put it all in days. Okie doke. So that was four. Any questions on that? Okay. 23, which value is not contained in the, in the solution of the system? We have to have a separate sheet of paper for this. Because, so take out your little note sheet. You're not going to fit everything in here. So... System of equations and three variables. Which variable, A, B, or C, are we going to eliminate the first, well, maybe I can fit it, the first two times? Cameron, what do you think? The B, absolutely. So Cameron, talk me through this. Am I adding or subtracting here for the first two equations? Opposite signs, plus minus, add. Very good. So A plus 4A is 5A. The Bs eliminate. Negative 1 plus 4 is plus 3C. Negative 20 plus 19, negative 1. On the second two equations, I'm just going to say it because I kind of just took his answer and went with it. He said Bs because they all already have the same number. So he doesn't have a need for the multiplying step, which can save, you know, just time and energy. Um, these are both already five. Same sign means subtract. So be careful with your subtraction because of double signs. Here in long division, all of those places, 4A minus negative A is 4A plus A, which is 5A. 4C minus negative 5C is 4C plus 5C, which is 9C. 19 plus 2, or I'm sorry, 19 minus 2, 17. So there's our first two rounds of elimination. What am I going to eliminate next, Kaylee Smith? The A's, because they're already the same. This is lovely. By addition or subtraction, subtraction. So subtract, subtract, subtract. We're going to get negative 6C equals negative 18. So C is 3. So which of the which value is not contained, so 3 is contained, so that's not it. Once you know C, I'm going to go back here to find B, one of these two equations. So 5, or to find A rather, 5A plus 3 times 3 is 9 equals negative 1. 
subtract 9 from both sides, we get 5a equals negative 10. So a is negative 2. So option 1 is out. And once you know a and c, we can go back to an original and find b. So a is negative 2 plus 5b minus my 3, which is the c, equals negative 20. I can add 2 over, add 3 over. I get 5b equals negative 15. So b is negative 3. So 2 is the only one that's not in the solution system. Very good. And 24. In 2010, the population, I'm going to have us vote on this. So read this to yourself. Are you ready? On your mark, get set, go. Oh boy, that's not good. Well, let's say this, one is definitely out. This is growing by 50%. In number two, which a lot of you said, year zero is correct, obviously. If you take the first year, you're gonna take, you're gonna take the, initial zeroth year and add 1.5% to the year before. What if you did this? Because it'd probably be easier to see why it's wrong if we actually did it out. The answer should have been four. All you're doing is you're taking the year before and multiplying it by 1.015. So for year one, one minus one would give you the previous term, P sub zero. You just take the previous term and multiply it by 1.015. This has got you adding on something and multiplying the year before. So this is growing like incredibly because you're multiplying, you're increasing by the 1.5% and you're adding it on an additional amount. Um, you might want to, in a problem like this, just to be sure, have year one, come up on your own what you think year two would be, what you think year three would be, and then plug in a two to get year two, plug in a three to get year three. I'll do that and maybe show you that tomorrow. Nathan? Correct. Yes. I'll talk more about that tomorrow.